Hello. Just one thing. God is sovereign in each of our lives. In spite of the circumstances that we may be in, in spite of the political, economic, and even health conditions of our nation, God is sovereign. And He is sovereign also in your own life, in your own family. And today we will be talking about the poverty spirit. We would like to understand that God is sovereign in your finances. He is sovereign in your economic life. And so we need to look at what is causing so much poverty, even among Christians, when God has promised us that we will be successful and prosperous. So, let us look into these circumstances. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray? Father, we pray that you will just bless the preaching of this word. Bless this preacher, God, and bless every hearing ear that we will receive life and that would be an abundance of it, O Father. That to deal with the things that are hindering us from enjoying your most perfect will of a blessed life, an abundant life. This we pray, Father, for Christ our Lord. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Okay. We know that to be poor is not having enough food or clothing or even proper shelter over our family. Being poor is an urgent is an urgent unmet need for more money and for material possessions. You know, being poor can be described as being without a dream that will take you out of poverty. We need to have a dream or else we will just going, be going through the routine uh, aspects of our life without any hope, without any destination. You know, some believe that it is so spiritual to be poor. Don't believe that. You know, that is not the way God lives. God lives in such abundance. And neither does He want us to live that way. Just look at how He blessed Abraham. The Bible teaches that we are to follow or emulate Abraham and even exceed the blessings of Abraham. You know, and Abraham, when he left his nation, left his household, and went to where God wanted to take him, God increased him, God promoted him, God brought him so much prosperity. That is also what should happen in our lives. In our life, we are also going through a journey. We are going through an exodus from the worldliness, from the darkness, into the light and into the blessings of God. And we would like to just have the model of Abraham applied into our lives. You know, we can take the advice of one of the richest men who ever lived. The richest and the wisest. And that is, of course, King Solomon. He thought it's, he told us that poverty will attack us. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 11. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. You see, poverty does not choose personality. You could be rich, you could have nothing, but still poverty will pounce on you. That is why we need to understand the kingdom principles of prosperity to protect us from the attack, from the ambuscades of that spirit of poverty. Poverty would also want to destroy you. Wow, that's the work of the devil, to steal, to kill, and destroy. The word on the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15 tells us, The wealth of the rich is their fortress, but the poverty of the poor is their destruction. When you are poor, you will be so destroyed because that is the very tendency of the spirit, or that is the where work of the spirit of poverty. Poverty actually will thrive on ignorance. If there is ignorance, oh, poverty will always take over. Do you know that in many uh, nations where there is a strong man, 
where there is a dictator, they always, the dictators always want the people to be uneducated because ignorance of the people will bring them to poverty and poverty will, will bring them into submission to the, to the powers at hand. Proverbs 13 verse 18, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction, but he that regards reproof shall be honored. Wow. We need to understand, receive instructions. Now, unemployment also will lead to poverty. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 23, that work brings profit, but near talk leads to poverty. So, just being a standby and a skinita and, um, and talking and talking without engaging in profitable work, it will lead to poverty. Wow. Nothing happens when we just do nothing. So too much sleep also leads to poverty. Proverbs 20 verse 13. If you love sleep, you will end up in poverty. Keep your eyes open and there will be plenty to eat. Wow. What a wonderful thought. Poverty will limit your circle of friends. Proverbs 19 verse 4, wealth makes many friends. Poverty drives them all away. Wow, I, there is a story online regarding a very wealthy Korean. He had more than 300 million pesos. But you know what? He did not apply the principles of prosperity in his finances. And you know what? He lost the 300 million. How? By gambling. And before he had that money, before, when he had all that money, he had so much friends. But when he lost it, when he became bankrupt, there were no friends that stood with him. Nobody was around him. He was all alone. So get rich schemes also lead to poverty. Proverbs 21 verse 5, The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. Wow. So don't try to get rich quick. Just wait on the Lord. Listen to what the Lord has for you and do what He says. Do what the Lord leads you to do. Fantasizing about wealth also will lead to poverty. That would be wishful thinking. Proverbs 28 verse 19. A hard worker has plenty of food, but the person who chases fantasies ends up in poverty. Cannot keep on daydreaming because daydreaming doesn't lead us to hard work. We're just hoping and dreaming and wishing and it will lead to poverty. Failure to give will also lead to poverty. There is that scatters, that's in Proverbs 11.24. There is that scatters and yet increases. And there is one that withholds more than is, more than is meat, but it tends to poverty. Giving actually, according to kingdom principle, it's better to give than to receive. Because what you give, you will receive. Press down, shaken together, shall be added unto your lap. Wow. So when you also have a lack of vision, there will be a poverty mindset that will try to eat you up. Poverty is a mindset that is created by lots of experiences. It doesn't happen right away. It's because of the negative experiences of the person, it leads to a poverty mindset. You know, the problem is not actually money. It's not money. And you must understand that the more money you have, it will not solve the problem. You will still be, uh, you will still have poverty in spirit. Poverty actually creates a mindset, a certain kind of believing about yourself and about the world it cripples 
your mind cripples your dream it cripples your hope the cause of poverty actually is not lack of money many people think that the cause of poverty is lack of money you know that the lack of money can actually be a result of an action that causes poverty that's why there is lack of money because of that action that leads to poverty so that in many ways is true of course but that does not have to be your future you don't have to be poor you don't have to to wallow in poverty that is if you begin to make the right choices today hallelujah so wrong choices out right choices in it starts with dealing with poverty mentality deal with it because that mentality is the very reason why there is poverty your poverty mindset keeps you stuck up where you are financially you must become so desperate for change that you will change that you don't want to be where you are you don't want to have the same thing you don't want to be poor you want to want, want to cry out to god lord help me save me no we must be desperate enough that we don't want the same things we don't want the status quo of poverty a poverty mindset can manifest itself in a lack of vision for the future oh there is it's already surrender no more looking forward to the future no more dreams no more plans no more hope and you may end up stuck up in a financial rut perhaps you'll be working in a job that barely meets the financial needs of your household yes you have a job but your work does not meet your expenses your expenses is more than your income when you lack vision it's hard to break out and venture into new things wow we have to have a creative mind we have to have vision or we can believe that god would give you an idea to take you to prosperity you know god can give you a multi-million peso idea can you just imagine the one who invented the paper clip that person became a millionaire the person who invented the the safety safety needle safety pin he became a millionaire can you just imagine very simple ideas just one idea can make you a millionaire and you know god can give you an idea and it can bring you so so much prosperity believe in god ask of it from the lord and you know god will not let you alone because our god is a prayer answering god wealth or prosperity actually is something that resides within us it's not what we have it's not what we own wealth or poverty is something that resides within us you need you see poverty is a state of mind it's about perspective what you and how you see things it's not about always about money it is a fear of never having enough you know you have something inside of you and you have a fear spirit of fear that you will never have enough wow so to break the state of mind we have to make different choices don't don't make the same choices you had before make a different choice especially according to what the bible what god is saying to you unlock the shackles unlock the fetters that had been placed on your minds you see we have this mindset because perhaps is what it was brought by our parents it was brought upon us by the society around us so these have shackled us these have put us into a prison you know our belief about the world works how the world works is passed down from generation to generation and so there is bondage why because it's how the parents tell us what they tell us what the people around will tell you they will tell you you don't have money you don't have education you will not succeed 
A. Trust in God. Don't look at what you have in your hands. You know, God can work with nothing in our hands. Wow. We have to believe that. People may say that they want to be wealthy. Of course, you want to be wealthy? We all want to be wealthy. However, a mindset that is set on poverty cannot handle a sudden increase in wealth. Well, God is the source of all wealth. He is the source, source of all blessing. He is, source, he is the source of all riches. But these things can only be accessed by the mind. Can you imagine? If you can imagine, you can own it. If you can imagine, you can have it. Wealth, blessing, and riches can be accessed by the mind. Believe and receive. Wow. Put your faith in your God who is the owner of all the gold, the silver, and the cattle of a thousand hills. Have you and I ever wondered why so many of those who win the lottery quickly and are poorer than they started? Oh, it's because they have a poverty mindset instead of a wealth mindset. Um, some people tell me stories of there's a person who, who won the lotto of 14 million pesos, but in three months, he lost it. Can you imagine that? Being wealthy is not just about earning more money. Oh, are you hearing me? It's not about earning more money. And being poor is not just about having low income or being unlucky. Both wealthy and poor mentality has their root in the mind. So, we need to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. We need to think right. We need to have the right standards or the right materials in our minds, in our hearts, so that we will have that wealth mentality. The poverty mindset thinks of money as something that will allow you to buy what you always wanted. Oh, I want to buy that. Oh, I want to buy this. Oh, I want to save for this. Oh, I want to go to this place. I want to go to other lands. I want to travel. You know, the person soon runs out of money and ends up in serious financial trouble. Poverty-minded people do not understand financial principles of, of Scripture. A poverty mentality is a mindset that some people develop over time about money. Oh, it's because of the experiences. It's because of what they hear. It's because of what they understand. You know, this is usually a deep-seated belief that you will never have enough. Even those who have so much money, they can be so poor because of a poverty mentality. Their thinking is they, they do not have enough. They have to have more. They have to have more. So they are unhappy because only money can make them happy. With all the money they have, they are still unhappy because of that poverty mentality. The, the spirit of poverty actually is a demonic stronghold. It comes from the darkness. You know, it will keep you from the fullness of the victory of the cross at Calvary. The victory of the cross, it's a Passover for us. Passover from poverty to wealth. Passover from sickness to health. Passover from bondage to freedom. But because of that demonic stronghold, because of that spirit of poverty, we cannot walk in the fullness of the victory of the Lord at the cross. We cannot enjoy the fullness of our inheritance in Christ because of the demonic strongholds. You know, the enemy, the powers of darkness, will control how you think. They will inject that poverty thinking into your mind, into your heart, and it will keep you there. Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. The enemy knows that. He wants you to think that you are poor. He wants you to think that you will never have enough. He wants you to think that, that you are not lucky enough. 
So it's also important to understand that poverty happens inside you before it ever happens around you. Oh, poverty, it always starts within. Not outside, but within. Poverty first manifests in the spirit and then it will reflect in the natural, in your material blessing, into your financial status, into your work, into your business. It all starts, poverty starts in the spirit. That's why we must guard our hearts. There are demonic strongholds. And Satan builds spiritual strongholds of poverty, you know, not just on people, but also on nations. There are many poor nations and also poor churches. Wow. And also individuals and families. These strongholds that Satan builds attack the minds and the hearts of people. So to build patterns of poverty thinking, that is what they want, and to stop them from giving to God's work. You know, when we hinder ourselves from giving to the work of God, when we don't give to the church, it will bring us the poverty mindset. Oh, I cannot give this to the church because I need it more than the church. What? What a lie that the enemy has placed in, 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 in these people. A poverty mindset draws our focus onto our condition rather than the Word of God. Brings us into a focus on our need. We don't have enough food. We don't have, uh, we don't have a vehicle. We don't have electricity. We don't have money to pay for the water bill. It brings us onto our conditions rather than focusing on the Word of God. The Word of God has a solution for everything that we have, we, we encounter. Everything that we need, every problem, the Word of God always has a solution. So, this poverty mindset will disguise itself as wisdom. Oh, claiming to look at things practically. Yeah, to tell you, oh, it's practical to keep your money than to give it to the church. It's more practical to, to buy your food than to go hungry and by giving your money to the church. Whoa. It claims to look at things practically, you know, but it actually sees things through the eyes of unbelief. Unbelief. It does not believe the word of God. You know, the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path towards an abundant life. We need to cast or remove our bad thinking habits. Do you know, a stronghold is like a fortified city which allows nothing in and nothing out. And you know what? It also can relate to our mind. Our mind, when there is a stronghold, is that does, it does not allow anything to come in and nothing to come out. You know, it means that any thought that does not conform to the things that we were taught when we were still children, for example, for example, will not be allowed in. So when we were told to not to give, uh, to keep your money, and so the thought will not allow anything that will tell you to give. That is why some people cannot accept God's love. You know why? Because their minds have been fortified because of their experience as a child. Wow. You know, somebody sent me a message. You know, Pastor, I am in pain because I have a problem relating to God. Because I have a problem regarding my biological father. I was rejected when I was a child. And ever since, I've been carrying this pain. That's why I, I do not know how to relate to God. And this person has been, been a Christian for such a long time. Can you imagine that? Strongholds destroy our testimony. The same applies to a men poverty mentality. Whenever somebody tells us 
that we could prosper and enjoy the abundance of all the things, we reject those thoughts. And as a result, we live in poverty. Can you just believe that you're going to prosper? Can you not believe that God's going to prosper you? Can you not believe that there's going, there's going to be an increase and in promotion? But the spirit of poverty will tell you, hey, don't believe that. That's not true. Oh, but there are thoughts which are based on God's word that comes from the very throne of God. Wow. And he wants those thoughts to penetrate your mind. Okay. So that you can change the way you think or the way you have been programmed by the world so that you will be a better person, that you will have a breakthrough. Prosperity is actually part of our heavenly heritage. Are you a child of God? Yes, you have a heritage from God. It comes from being a child of the King. God doesn't want you to live in poverty. Hey, you know what the Bible says? God is pleased in the prosperity of the servants and saints. When you are not prospering, when you are in poverty, it hurts the heart of God. Remember, Jesus became poor. Why? So that we could become rich. Just think of that. God doesn't want you to be poor. He wants you to be rich. If you are a Christian, expect to become rich. Because God, that is God's will for you. So start today by renewing your mind. You know, you can take some verses in scripture that deal with prosperity. There are lots of them. You get scripture, verses of scripture that deal with blessing and pray them over your life. No, take this seriously. Meditate on these verses. Build a mental picture of yourself in relation to these verses that you are living in abundance. Wow. Start confessing these promises over and over and over again. Wow. Decree a thing and it shall be established. That's why confess those promises over and over again. Avoid associating with negative people. Oh, people who have negative or even uh, poverty mentality. Or those who do not have a good financial testimony. Those who, are, those who are indebted, do not hang out with those people because they are bound by a spirit of poverty. So find yourself a spiritual mentor who has overcome poverty and broken strongholds in this area and learn from them. If you want to be successful, find someone who is successful. Ask questions. Be teachable and be willing to make changes that are, of course, necessary to your financial recovery. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall not meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written. Wow! For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. What does it say? Take the word of God seriously. Listen to what it says. Do what it says. So that it, you will be prosperous and you will have good success. Success and prosperity will always come from what God is telling you. So listen to what God has to say. Listen to the kingdom principles of God. You know, the state or condition of your mind, how you think, what you see, how you see things, how you decide, the state or condition of your mind tells you where you will be tomorrow, whether you will be poor or whether you will be wealthy. So, change the way you think. Change the way what you believe. Have what God is saying into your system. Be serious regarding it. So let's pray. Father, you're the source of every good thing. 
and you have given us your word that we may know how to move in and move out in circumstances and in situations and get out from the trap of the poverty mindset. Father, we want to get out of any kind of, uh, of, of bondage. Should there be any one of us, O oh Father, who are bound by the spirit of poverty, who have that kind of mentality, are bound to that poverty, Father, we pray, visit the way we think. Cancel out every lie of the enemy in each of our lives. Demolish those strongholds that do not receive what your word is saying to us. Cancel out, O oh God, the power of the enemy in our lives and transform us, Father, to the very person that we are supposed to be from glory to glory. Father, we ask that your mercy will abound, that your grace will abound, that we will always find favor before you even today. We thank you, Father, as we pray through Christ our Lord. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Believe that you are going to break through into wealthy circumstances in your life. Do not be bound by that poverty mentality. Amen? God bless you.